Please join me in a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God correspondence? Yes. We got a letter from Peter Swerdlaw, applying to fill a vacancy on the West Neck Water District Board of Directors. A letter from Stephen Sanders applying for membership on the Green Options Advisory Committee. A letter from Stan Church concerning the Ram's Head Inn Dock. A letter from Giovanna Ketchum resigning from the Recreation Committee. A letter from Jay Christian concerning retirement. A letter from an email from Michael Shatkin concerning wetlands buffers. And a letter from Sharon Jacobs retiring from her position of Deputy Town Clerk and Deputy Registrar of Vital Statistics. Effective November 20th, 2021. And that's it. Okay, thank you, Don. Okay, uh, Supervisor's Financial Report. I guess I should have been reading this. Pursuant to Section 125 of the Town Law, I hereby render the following detailed statement of all monies received and dispersed by me during the month of October 2021. We had we started the month with a balance of 33,114,000. $652.39. We took in $871,835.74. We spent $1,295,421.95, leaving us with a total balance of $32,691,066.18. And that's for the That's for October. Uh, yeah, balance through, uh, yeah, 1031. That's not my sense, but. That's what I got here. Mm, that's, it usually comes in that format. That's why you haven't been reading that, because. Oh. Different numbers. You have different numbers? Yeah. I think because Shelby's got the, uh, this, did this come from Shelby? Yeah. Because that has um, the class accounts and the other accounts, whereas Johnny's got it broken out separately. Okay. Should I, read, should I read that one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Read that one. Thanks. Oh, I see. This is a total investment. I got you. Okay. So we started the month. This is, okay, class account is separate. Okay. So we started with $18,106,664.41. We took in $874,326.02. We dispersed $1,295,421.95, leaving us with a balance of $17,685,568.48 and invested in the class account, which that would be the difference, is $7,227,173.03. And that's through the month of October. Okay. Thanks, Doug. Let's get that back. Okay, we'll start with uh, we'll set some hearings. Jim, you want to start us off? Certainly. <clears throat> Whereas Nina Pinto, <clears throat> Two Seagull Road, has petitioned the town of Shelter Island permission to install a mooring at Smith's Cove at a location designated as latitude 41.05063 degrees north and longitude 72.31666 degrees west. Now, therefore, be it resolved that pursuant to section 90-5, the code of the town of Shelter Island, the town board hereby calls for a public hearing to be held at 4.40 p.m. prevailing time on the third day of December 2021 for all interested persons to be heard in favor of or in opposition to the proposed installation. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Whereas, Alan, Alan and Ellen Roizan, 153 North Ram Island Drive, have petitioned the town of Shelter Island for permission to remove and dispose of existing lower platform, install an 8,000 pound boat lift in the location of lower platform, elevate existing dock two feet, redeck with untreated lumber, and provide for water and electric. Now, therefore, be it resolved that pursuant to section 53 9 of the code of the town of Shelter Island, the town board hereby calls for a public hearing to be held at 4 46 p.m. prevailing time on the third day of December 2021 for all interested persons to be heard in favor of or opposition to the proposed construction. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Whereas Greg Pascarelli, 30 Little Ram Island Drive, has petitioned the town of Shelter Island for permission to install a mooring in Cockles Harbor in front of applicants' property at a location designated as latitude 41.080117.4 degrees north and longitude 72. 0.303073 degrees west, said mooring location was formerly occupied by the C2323 Montgomery mooring. Now, therefore, be it resolved that pursuant to section 90-5 of the code of the town of Shelter Island, the town board hereby calls for a public hearing to be held at 4.48 p.m. prevailing time on the third day of December 2021 for all interested persons to be heard in favor of or in opposition to the proposed installation. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Whereas Charles McGill, 89 North Ferry Road, has petitioned the town of Shelter Island for permission to install a mooring in West Neck Bay off the Cackle Hill Landing at a location designated as latitude 41.064603 degrees north and longitude 72.364641 degrees west. <clears throat> now, therefore, be it resolved that pursuant to section 90-5 of the code of the town of Shelter Island, the town bar here. Town board hereby calls for a public hearing to be held at 4.52 p.m. prevailing time on the third day of December 2021 for all interested persons to be heard in favor of or in opposition to the proposed insulation. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Whereas pursuant, pursuant to section 31H of the public officer's law, a town officer must sign and file a constitutional oath of office within 30 days after the term of office begins. And whereas on October 1st, 2021, Doug Sherrod was appointed to serve as a member of the Water Advisory Committee for a term to expire on April 2nd, 2023. And whereas Mr. Sherrod has not yet signed and filed said constitutional oath of office, and whereas the town board desires to have Mr. Sherrod serve on the town of Shelter Island in said capacity. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Doug Sherrod is hereby appointed to serve as a member of the Water Advisory Committee for a term to expire on April 2nd, 2023. So moved. Dottie, has he come in yet? And since, since has Doug Sherrod actually showed up yet? With I call Well, he came in one to sign, but it was too late for the other resolution. Okay. And we told him to oh, come so back when he gets his letter. This one, okay. All right, that's just to clear that up. He was guys. Fine. All right, yeah. so I did okay. get a hold of him. Okay, I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Be resolved that the supervisor is hereby authorized and directed to credit the check in the amount of $875 from the Shelter Island School to the 2021 Public Works A1490.435 non highway tree maintenance account. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Whereas pursuant to section 108 of the town law, a public hearing was duly held on the third day of November, 2021 on the preliminary budget for the year 2022, at which time all interested persons had an opportunity to speak in favor of or in opposition to any and all items therein contained. And whereas this budget has been available for inspection by any interested persons at all reasonable hours. And whereas the town board has revised the preliminary budget and made certain adjustments. Now, therefore be it resolved that the preliminary budget is hereby adopted and declared to be the annual budget for the year 2022. Two. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, we have to do a roll call, call, on, yeah, call on this. Okay. Councilman Colligan? Aye. Councilman Dixon? Aye. Councilwoman Brock Williams? Aye. Supervisor Siller? Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Whereas James, Davy, James Davies, applicant, has applied to the Shelter Island Town Board for permission to undertake significant construction within vegetative buffer and adjacent regulated area at 66 Ram Island Drive, Shelter Island, New York, zoned AA residential, near shore overlay, designated as Suffolk County tax map lot 0700-9-3-5, the premises. And whereas the applicant proposes removal of an unpermitted wood stair along the property line to the bulkhead, installation of a new paver-based stone staircase and a retaining wall and installation of a new pool and patio that will be situated approximately 90 feet, nine inches varying to 95 feet, four inches from the wetlands barrier. Whereas the proposed construction includes the following work at least partially within the 75 foot vegetative barrier, removal of the wooden stairs and replacement of a platform at the bulkhead within the installation of a new stone stair. And whereas the proposed construction includes the following additional work at least partially within the 100 foot 
adjacent regulated area, a new retaining wall, pool, and stone steps, and whereas all further work is proposed in conforming locations for which a wetlands permit is not necessary. And whereas the application was referred to the planning board and CAC for recommendations, and recommendations have been submitted and considered. And whereas the New York State DEC issued a letter of non-jurisdiction, number 1-4732-00098, <clears throat> backslash 0003, dated March 12, 2021. Whereas the Suffolk County Department of Health Services approval is not required for this project. And whereas the board considered the proposed action at a public hearing pursuant to notice on October 22, 2021. And whereas this board now wishes to render a decision on this wetlands permit, now, therefore, be it resolved that the board hereby establishes itself as lead agency pursuant to SECRA and finds that this is a type two action, which will not result in a significant adverse impact on the environment. And be it further resolved that the town board makes the following findings as to the permit. Number one, this board hereby adopts the findings of the planning board and conservation advisory council with the exception that the CAC had recommended that the pool be moved closer to the house and the board finds that the issue of ensuring safety is paramount and consequently the pool need not be moved closer to the house in this instance. And this project would have a minimal effect on the wetlands as it removes a number of unpermitted items. Three, the proposed project will not have a negative impact on the quantity and quality of groundwater. Four, there were no practicable, practicable alternatives which allow the project to be constructed outside the regulated area. Five, the proposed project has adequate mitigation measures proposed or required, including runoff controls that contribute to the protection and enhancement of wetlands. And number six, this permit is issued solely for the purpose of allowing intrusion into the wetlands and is not intended to restrict or exercise control over the general aesthetics of the project to be it further resolved that a wetlands permit for the above described work to be conducted at a premises <clears throat> is hereby granted to the extent that all work is conducted within the applicable setbacks as de depicted on the site plan prepared by Ian McDonald architect dated June 28, 2021 and the site plan of Matthew Sherman of Sherman Engineering and consulting last revised November 11, 2021, and subject to the following conditions. Construction procedures and erosion controls, including the anchored installation and maintenance of wireback silt fence during all stages of construction shall be required and be designed to prevent any runoff from disturbed ground into the wetland area. Soil disturbance should be minimized where possible and three, the construction site must be cleaned of all trash and debris on an ongoing basis with a minimum once per week. And four, the location of mitigation measures shall be examined by the building department prior to the start of work and periodically thereafter. Number five, no project excavation, regardless of depth, may intrude into the water table and require dewatering. <clears throat> Number six, construction materials and equipment shall be staged outside the regulated area. And seven, parking of all construction and delivery vehicles should be on premises or pursuant to the agreed parking plan. Number eight, no public street or public right of way may be obstructed or impaired during construction. And nine, applicant must repair any damage to any adjacent road or street caused by construction vehicles to the satisfaction of the town highway superintendent. And number 10, the project manager shall post a sign on the site with a cell phone number and shall address in a timely fashion, neighbor concerns regarding litter control, parking, noise, road conditions, and other impacts caused by the project. And 11, the applicant shall install an automatic pool cover, salt cell disinfection, a cartridge filter, and permeable patio. 12, the applicant shall install a 15-foot non-turf buffer along the bulkhead, 13, the existing septic system shall be replaced by a nitrogen reducing IE <clears throat> on-site wastewater septic system. 
Noise control should be pursuant to the town code. 15 applicants shall install dark sky compliant lighting pursuant to the town code on all new outdoor lighting on this project. And 16, prior to issuance of a wetland permit, the applicant must file a certificate of insurance with the town clerk showing the town of Shelter Island as an additional insured under a comprehensive general liability policy with a minimum limits of $500,000. And 17, this permit shall only be valid for construction commencing within two years of the date of this approval. And be it further resolved that any proposed change to the project, which will result in the further incursion into the vegetative buffer or adjacent regulated area, or which would violate any condition of this permit, shall require the applicant to seek a formal amendment to this permit from the town board. Resolve that copies of this approval should be filed with the building inspector dated November 12, 2021. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I, I have issues with this um, proposed project. Um, <clears throat> I think the town board prioritizes property owner interest. Um, just my feeling, my words. I think the town board needs to pay better attention to what the CAC recommendations. They did recommend the pool be moved closer to the house or even Cox, so it wasn't so <clears throat> intrusive in the regulated area. Um, is it really a safety concern? I think a lot of times people throw safety on the table and it trumps everything once you say safety. And I think there could have been, um, <clears throat> The applicant could have made some changes. Uh, I, I I personally looked into it, uh, you know, online, and uh, the recommendations were twelve to fifteen feet spacing from the from the house to the pool. So I, I think safety was a legitimate issue. Good. Okay. Yeah, my my only other comment was that the five feet. Uh, I, I would say that you know if we were 20, 15, 20 feet into the into that area that I I would see the necessary you know. It being important to do, but uh, based on what Jerry had told me, I kind of support that. I do like the fact, Al, that you spoke up about the IA system. We did not make it contingent on the fact that the person was going to get a uh, uh, some type of uh, grant, you know. So it's all part of the application now, which kind of forces the person to put the IA system in the ground, uh, regardless of whether it's funded or it's not funded. So I think that's a major step for the uh, for the environment. A lot of my position um, is really to encourage the board yeah. to seriously look at the 100 foot in a given circumstance. Mm -hmm. I mean, some circumstances don't, right. don't allow for that, mm -hmm. but look at that seriously and, and look at the CAC recommendations. I won't be around really. No, I, 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 I appreciate that, Al, but I think we very seriously did look at the uh, Howard here, the CAC recommendations. And again, the, the discussion, at the planning board meeting the other night was a, it's a case by case decision. And uh, I mean, I felt comfortable that, you know, with all the mitigation that the homeowner just, you know, put in on his own, he, he was, you know, trying his hardest to make up for, uh, you know, the five foot, you know, he was going into the regulated area. All right. Okay. Moving right along. Okay. Whereas Shorewood Farms Incorporated, Seagull Road, Right. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Am I wrong? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Whereas Seawood Farms Incorporated, Seagull Road has petitioned the town of Shelter Island for permission to maintain dredge inlet channel from Shelter Island Sound into Clark's Creek to six feet below mean low water, removing 1,000 cubic yards of soil, dredge spoil to be deposited at an appropriate off site location. And whereas the Waterways Committee of the Town Board has inspected the site and approved of said repairs, and now therefore be it resolved that the town clerk is hereby authorized to issue a permit for the affirmation dredging work. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the next one is for the uh, determine the use for the community development block grant <clears throat> funds. And before I start, there was a little discussion before the meeting and maybe some miscommunication. This money was already allocated and it's just how we're gonna spend it. Cause we had talked about 
going for you know uh, bigger funds in the future. So uh, for 2023, we will and we'll discuss that start that discussion early in the year. So we can. Uh, this is like the traditional Mount Shelter Islands always gotten, right. but we were advised that if we have any significant projects, we should you know apply for some you know significant money. And we'll and we'll know that based on the engineering reports that we do during 2022, because we do have money allocated in the budget to be able to be able to start that process of making a review of those two buildings, namely Justice Hall and police headquarters to find out what needs to be done in order to make it ADA compliant. And again, I wanna remind the community that there, we were never under the impression that we're gonna to try to get this all done in a single year or two. Those expenses will be spread out over a period of time based on cost. And we will also try to the best of our ability to seek additional funding outside of the budget through grant monies and other such types of funding projects to be able to fund those improvements. You can remember those buildings are now getting near about 85 years of age and they, you know, they are not ADA compliant. So we're gonna do our best to, to make them compliant. Okay. Whereas a public hearing was duly held on the 23rd day of October, 2021, on the proposed use of approximately $13,570 in federal community development block, block grant funds the Town of Shelter Island expects to receive in 2022. And whereas all interested town residents express citizen views on local needs to be met with these funds. Now, therefore be it resolved that the town board hereby determines that the use of said funds shall be designated as follows. $13,570 for renovations to the community center, which includes the porch roof, doorway, handicapped entrance, and any other designated re reservation, renovations determined by the town board. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Whereas Maria P. Raza has applied for a rebate from the town of Shelter Island under chapter 88 of the Shelter Island Town Code to install a low nitrogen sanitary system for property located at 19 Dinah Rock Road, Shelter Island, New York. And whereas the Water Quality Improvement Advisory Board has reviewed the project and recommended a conditional rebate of up to $6,000 be awarded. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board hereby adopts the findings of the WQIAB and approves the applicant for a conditional rebate of up to $6,000 in eligible costs upon completion of the project and subject to the applicant's compliance with and completion of all terms and conditions of the conditional rebate agreement. And be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution shall be given to the Water Quality Improvement Advisory Board and the Building Department. So moved. Um, second in discussion. Sure. Um, I thought that she they had applied for an eight thousand dollar grant. Um, there was a six thousand, then there was a two thousand. Yeah, let me just dollar see. edition. Hold a second. Let me just see if I can find it quickly. <clears throat> they were awarded eight thousand dollar grant. Um, I'm looking at the sheet. I see six thousand. Oh, plus fifteen hundred income. Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred in income incentive. Yeah. Yep. Request is everything else. That's your question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is what I think. Bob right. can verify that, right, Bob? Um, that's the summary. I don't think we have those minutes yet. This was the sign off, right? I mean, they had an income incentive. I just don't remember specifically what it was. Um, I believe Albert's right, though, that it was 1500. That's what they applied for. Do we want to hold this one until we can yeah. verify it for the next meeting? Yeah. Okay, I want to jam it up, but no, it's all there. Or mm -hmm. put through the six and amend it as required. That, I, that I, would whatever be, you want to do. It'd be a way to go. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Since that's how it was written, because I presumably. You know, it would have been forwarded on. I doubt this. Let's approve yeah. this. Let's approve, let's approve yeah. the 6,000. We can always yeah. amend it, you yeah. know, add the 1,500. Yeah. Did you make a motion? Um, we just have to vote. Second. Uh, yeah. 
Second. All, Remember, all what was the favor? name of the applicant? Aye. Aye. I'm sorry? Raza, R-A-Z-Z-A. -Z -Z You get that, Bob? Raza, R A Z Z A. Yeah. We're going to approve the six thousand, and then the fifth, we can amend it if they qualify for the fifteen hundred additional. Fifteen hundred is the, was what they were eligible for. Right. So that. Right. So we'll do the six thousand now, so that we don't delay the project if, right. if they get it moving. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, hold on a second. I found the minutes. Yep, seventy five hundred. Yeah. So 6,000 plus 1,500 income incentive. All right, so you want to make okay, that change so, now? Yes, yeah, so well, let's make the I'll change, change it to a conditional rebate of up to 6,000 plus a 1,500 income incentive in eligible costs. All right, so that's amended. Al, you second the am amendment? Second. All right, Karen, let's take a new vote on it. Okay, all those in favor of the amended uh, resolution? Aye. 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 So moved. Good catch. <clears throat> Thank God that memory's not going, Dixon. Um, that's all I can tell you. You're on it. Be resolved that the resolution number 499-2021, authorizing the purchase of the trailer for Crescent Beach is hereby amended by adding the following. And be it further resolved that the supervisor is hereby authorized and directed to expend the sum of $40,250.40 from the 2021 Public Works a1490.498 Crescent Beach bathroom account <clears throat> to Comforts of Home Services Incorporated, 410 Rathbone Avenue, Aurora, Illinois, 60506 for the required down payment for said trailer. So moved. And before I second, just a discussion item there that's covered by a, it's a 50 50 uh, percent grant through the state. I think that's Parks and Recreation, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, so everything that we spend at Crescent Beach for that bathroom will be reimbursed by 50%. Uh, and remember, we started out with trying to get a permanent building there. And that did not work for a variety of reasons. So we went back to a trailer and just to remind everybody that that trailer will be down there just for the four months that we need it during May, June, July, and August, and probably part of September. Mm -hmm. But it will be taken off and stored elsewhere to, to increase the longevity of that trailer. So it's not sitting down there on day like today, getting sprayed with salt water and, and deteriorating. So the only thing we're working on now is getting it on a, some type of a slab or some type of concrete structure to be able to protect it. And we also plan on doing exactly what we did at Wade's Beach, putting that pavilion there with a sitting area outside the bathroom and it'll all be handicap accessible as well. So everything will be ADA compliant with that new bathroom down there. Uh, I second the motion, by the way. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Be resolved the supervisor and town engineer in conjunction with the contracted town grants writer are hereby authorized and directed to submit a grant application to New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services under the Hazardous Mitigation Grant Program for project scoping slash advancement. Said project is anticipated to provide the data and analysis that is needed to support the execution of the town's hazardous mitigation plan and will seek funding to investigate and design infrastructure at the North and South Ferry terminals to increase resiliency to storm damage and to provide additional operational functionality to support the town's emergency management plans. Be it there, be it further resolved, that if awarded, the grant will provide funding at 75% of the total project cost with the remaining 25% burden to be covered by the town. And again, this has been on our radar for a long period of time for the hazardous mitigation. And this is really sitting at the number one spot. So if you take a look at the, uh, the committee that does this and on the chief read, and you look at the hazmat plan for Shelter Island, there's a list of, of ongoing projects but at the very top of the list are the ferry terminals. And I think what brought that to the forefront were Sandy and Irene, then Sandy, and then coupled with these high tides where at certain times the, the, the uh, plazas have flooded over and it's been impossible to get a, 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 uh, an ambulance on, on and off that ferry. So it's a high priority item that we wanna correct as soon as possible and raise these up and do it correctly. So moved. 
Second, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Be resolved that the supervisor hereby authorized and directed to expend the sum of $400 from the A3120.491 Police Department contracts account to Magilchen, Inc., 140 Terry Drive, Suite 100, Newton, Pennsylvania, for the renewal of the membership user fees for the period July 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 2022. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Whereas Vladimir and Jessica Colas, 8 Westmoreland Drive, have petitioned the town of Shelter Island for a wetlands permit to replace existing 846 square foot wood deck and steps with 1,238 square feet of raised wood deck and steps <clears throat> located partially within the regulated area, 252 square foot within the 25 foot adjacent <coughs> regulated area, install approximately 115 square feet feet of stepping stones adjacent to reconstructed deck within the 25 foot adjacent regulated area, remove 84 square feet of playground equipment from 25 foot adjacent regulated area, remove 77 square feet of pergola from 75 foot vegetative buffer and install 99 square feet of paver fire pit patio with um, grass joints within 75 foot vegetative buffer. Now, therefore be it resolved that pursuant to section 129-7 of the code of the town of Shelter Island, a public hearing will be held at 4.42 PM prevailing time on the third day of December, 2021 in the Shelter Island Town Hall, Shelter Island, New York for all interested persons to be heard in favor of or in opposition to the proposed application. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Whereas Nathan Graff and Marissa Ryan 12 Petticoat Lane have petitioned the town of Shelter Island for a wetlands permit to construct a second floor over existing first floor within wetlands regulated area. No outward expansion of building within the regulated area. Now, therefore, be it resolved that pursuant to section 129-7 of the code of the town of Shelter Island, public hearing will be held at 4 52 p.m. prevailing time on the third day of December 2021 in the Shelter Island Town Hall, Shelter Island, New York, for all interests of persons to be heard in favor of or in opposition to the proposed application. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. This next uh, uh, resolution is uh, going to the IA systems. This is the, remember the old number three we adopted maybe a month ago or so, numbers one, two, four, and five, and we couldn't agree on number three. And since that time, we've worked on number three. Now number three becomes number five on the new law. So I just wanted to clarify that. So when I get to that, I'll read that very slowly so everybody understands it. Be resolved that the town board hereby calls for a public hearing to be held at 4.54 p.m. prevailing time on the third day of December 2021 in Shelter Island Town Hall, Shelter Island, New York, for all interested persons to be heard in favor of or in opposition to the proposed local law entitled Revise Septic Requirements to wit be it enacted by the town board of the town of Shelter Island as follows. Number one, purpose, section one. The town of Shelter Island wishes to preserve the health and safety of its citizens and guests to take those steps that are necessary to ensure that the island's water supply is protected for this and future generations. Section two, uh, amendment. Chapter 43 of the town code of the town of Shelter Island is amended in that 43-10.1 IAOWTS required shall be expanded to the following. So this is, this is the new addition right here, folks. Number five, any expansion or renovation of a single family residence, a multifamily residence, or any other building capable of being used as a residence. A, that has an existing non-conforming septic system as determined by the Suffolk County Department of Health Services. B, increases the SFLA as defined by the town code by 25% or greater. C, increases the number of bedrooms as defined by Suffolk County Department of Health Services that exceeds the allowable number authorized by a permit previously issued by the Suffolk County Health Department. So obviously if they issued one for three bedrooms and you're putting on a fourth bedroom, that would necessitate an IA system. Section three, severability. In any provision of this chapter and its application to any person or circumstances is held invalid 
Such portion shall be deemed a separate, distinct, and independent provision, and such findings shall not affect the validity of the remaining portion of this chapter. Section 4, CEQA. The board hereby establishes itself as the lead agency pursuant to CEQA and finds that this action will not result in a significant adverse impact on the environment as the principal purpose herein is to ensure clean water. And Section 5, effective date, this, this local law shall be, take effect immediately on filing with the Secretary of State. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the next one is a uh, set of public hearing uh, for the removal of an unsafe building, which is something the town doesn't take lightly, and we will be discussing the uh, process on Tuesday. Be it resolved that the town board hereby calls for a public hearing to be held at 4.56 p.m. prevailing time on the third day of December 2021 in the Shelter Island Town Hall, Shelter Island, New York, for all interested persons to be heard in favor of or opposition to the declaration of seven cozy lane. Suffolk County tax map number 0700-2022-01-093 as a dangerous structure pursuant to sections 43 and 45 of the Shelter Island Town Code and the determination as to the disposition of the structure. And be it further resolved that the town clerk is directed to notify the owner of the premises by registered return receipt mail at least 10 days prior to the hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, the next resolution, I'm not going to read it in its entirety because it's nine pages long. Um, I'll read the first section so you understand what it is. Be it resolved that the town board hereby calls for a public hearing to be held at 4.58 p.m. prevailing time on the third day of December 2021 in the Shelter Island Town Hall, Shelter Island, New York, for all interested persons to be heard in favor of or in opposition to a proposed local law entitled Revised Definitions to wit. <clears throat> Be it enacted by the town board of the town of Shelter Island as follows. Section one, purpose. The town of Shelter Island wishes to clarify and standardize definitions throughout the town code. And then it goes on to um, give the definitions for things like immediate family, summer season, employee department. We're just, um, it just, the list goes on, obviously, for nine pages. Um, it's just so that we can um, have one set of definitions and not have to redefine things with it um, throughout the code. So that's what this is. And it's also going to be on the town website. If you go to the homepage under um, town topics, news um, and other information, it's um, you'll see upcoming pending laws and legislations. Um, the one that's there right now need, um, needs to be replaced because there were a couple of tweaks that were made since um, as this was being discussed. Um, but that and also the septic um, legislation will also be um, updated to have the most recent one on Monday. Just a question, Bob, uh, the definition of resident, will that help the WMAC finally move forward with uh, the, the applications that we have uh, that, that were LLC defined that we needed to clear up? Will, will this finally do it so we can act on that? Yeah, this, this will standardize it throughout the code so that it's the same for everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, be resolved that the following 2021 budget transfers are hereby approved. There's be a listing in the town clerk's office. There's a number of them here. I'm not going to go through them all. And then be it further resolved that the following 2021 budget modification is hereby approved. $2,500 from the waterways fund balance to the A3120.100 PS Bay Constable personal services account. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And finally, the last resolution, be it resolved that 2021 claims numbers 1713 through 1828 in the amount of $109,420.13 and the 2021 highway claims number 206 through 223 in the amount of $32,756 and the 2021 West Neck water claims number 41 through 42 in the amount of $11,824.73. And the Community Preservation Fund claim number 20 through 22 in the amount of $7,763.07 are hereby authorized for payment as audited. And the supervisor and or any town board member is hereby authorized and directed to sign the approval for payment of same. So moved. 
Second, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, at this time we're gonna recess the meeting and have a public hearing on the white mooring application. Dot. The application of Burton White, Nelson White, Shelter Island Trust, 34 South Manantic Road to install a mooring in the Narrows of West Neck Creek, approximately 115 feet off applicant's property to the Northwest at the location designated as latitude 41.055104 degrees north and longitude 72.354513 degrees west. Okay, Jim, WMAC report? Yes. So we met on October 13th, actually, on this application, we're talking about white, right? Yep. And by a vote of 501 with Mike Englund, the uh, person who abstained from the vote, and, and George actually wasn't actually in yet, he wasn't present for the vote, we approved this application. Any comments on this or questions on this one? Okay, we'll close that hearing and open the hearing on the Dunn mooring application, Dot. The application of Charles Dunn, 18 to 20 Tuttle Drive, to install a mooring in Cockles Harbor at a location designated as latitude 41.087428 degrees and latitude 72.29142 degrees west. Said mooring location was formerly occupied by the Robertson uh, C2551 mooring. And uh, on the Dunn mooring, uh, the vote went 502 to approve. Again, both Mike Anglin, because he's the installer of that, and George was absent for the vote at that particular point uh, to approve that uh, it was a takeover of the Robinson Moorings, as Dottie just said. Okay, any questions or comments on that one? We'll close that hearing and open the hearing on the Van der Bruggen Mooring. Dot. The application of Sylvie Van Hein Van Broek and Peter Van den Bruggen. Eight Rocky Point Road to install a mooring in West Neck Bay, approximately 125 feet northwest of the W3543 Langham mooring and designated as latitude 41.065132 degrees north and longitude 72.363774 degrees west. Again, on the same day, uh, in October 13th, the uh, WMAC approved this by a 601 because now uh, George was online and uh, Mike is the installer. So he recused himself. Uh, they approved, approved this morning. Any questions, comments on this one? Okay, we'll close that hearing and open the hearing on the Web Weber mooring application. Dot. The application of Susan Weber slash five winter LLC to install a mooring in Deering Harbor. At a location designated as latitude 41.0849 degrees north and longitude 72.34949 degrees west. Said mooring location was formerly occupied by the D3190 coral mooring. Yeah, and uh, the, we met uh, and approved this with the new coordinates, uh, which I gave Dottie. And uh, the, what, the only uh, ruling on that was we were a little missing because she owns two properties or she owns one property and then this next property, were they entitled to riparian moorings? And Sir Susan was entitled to her riparian mooring and the wait list became an issue and Dottie checked on the wait list and that is not an issue. So Dottie has resolved that. Uh, so that was, that is approved pending the, those two things. And so we're, we're good. So that riparian uh, supersedes uh, wait list. Is that yes. how it works? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Riparian goes right to the top. Yep. Yes. Then, okay. and that's, and that's what, Clarified that particular point for people that might be okay. Same. Any questions, comments on this one? Okay, we'll close that I, hearing and open. Sure, excuse oh, me. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, yep. I do have a question. I do have a question because yeah, Miss Weber. Hi, Miss um, Weber has an address of Katona, New York. So, and this is going under an LLC application. It, it, it begs me to ask about residency and LLC zoning moorings. And I look at um, the application and it's an LLC. And she, her, her driver's license for the application shows her address as Katona, New York. I mean, uh, and she, uh, she's a property owner. Uh, I don't think every property owner's license shows Shelter Island address. That's a mailing address. That's a mailing address. Bob, you want to uh, address this? Can I make her a resident? You're on mute, Bob. I'm sorry. Thought it was off um, Yeah, I mean, there's the, she's still the property owner. 
uh, the, you know, the corporation is the property owner and is entitled to the mooring. Um, I, I don't see what the, the issue is. The issue is she's not a resident and we've been going over this as far as residency and having moorings and, and, and not LLCs. This is why you're changing the definition of a resident to accommodate the LLCs to be able to have moorings. This is what I'm understanding and this is what I'm seeing happening here. So I'm trying to get clarification on this application that clearly states that she's an LLC. She submitted she the paperwork that proves, she submitted the paperwork that proves that she's the only acting manager partner and the in the LLC that she would apply mooring for. That's I don't necessarily see a problem with this, Jerry, but if you wanted to hold it for uh, one meeting until you change the residency definition, just for procedural purposes, I don't see a, a major well, issue. It's, it's, the, it's the same process we're going through with the Rams had in that we've been hmm. holding that one up because we, we're waiting to, you know, clear up the residency issue and just for the public's understanding, uh, even though it's in an LLC name, there's still the property owner. So that's what we're trying to define that it's the property owner. It, but you haven't. Okay, but this so seems should, to be hold, more of a- We, we, we oh, should I'm hold sorry. this until we define the uh, mm -hmm. definition, until we this, approve the definition. Yeah, similar to yeah. the- Just because the, the same reason we're doing the moorings and during our brain. Yeah. Not during our room. Ram's, uh, Ram's head in. I'm sorry. Yeah. And 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 might I just say this really seems like it's more a problem with the mooring code and not the definition of a resident, because the definition of a resident has more far-reaching ramifications in the town code than just this mooring law. That seems to be a problem with LLCs and moorings. And I and I know that I have said that I am not against the Ram's head in getting ownership of the moorings. It was just we needed to find a process under which code would allow such a thing. And changing yeah, the resident definition I mean, doesn't seem like it's the proper I, way to go about I, it to me. That's all. Emma, so, I'm not the sharpest hack in the box. I just don't understand if an LLC owns the property and on the application it shows you who the LLC officers are, they're the property owner. So I, I'm really not sure, you know, what we're missing. The mooring law says that a mooring has to be issued to a resident, not an LLC. And, so that's my that, that's my difficulty with it. You have to be a yeah. shelter island resident in order to get a mooring. So it's, that's why I'm saying I think it's more of a town code issue why, with the mooring law it? than residents. Take your name. Well, I think the thing Christine is here as the uh, clerk for the uh, WMAC. Hey, so this is issued mooring towards the person, the real person, not to LLC, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah we, we right. have everything that we yeah, ever- Yeah, the real requested. person who must be a resident. But she, the residency is defined also by owning a property. That's the, that's the thing that we're, that's the reason that you're changing the residency requirement is that an LLC will be able to be a resident under the new definition. But it hasn't been changed. If they own the property. Yeah, because I mean, the way I read it, I didn't bring it with me today because I didn't realize it was going to be an issue. Um, but in it, if it's owned by an LLC or an entity, then the underlying person has to be a Shelter Island resident, not the entity. Mm -hmm. That's that's why we're holding up the Rams head one. Yeah, we're right. that's exactly what I believe the code is. Yeah. And that's what's mm -hmm. reasonable. That's what you're changing in the residency requirements. Okay. Well, I was going to put this doing that, you're changing so much more. It's just, it's, it's, it just doesn't seem rational to me. You'll be changing so much more on the code by changing the definition of a resident to accommodate this mooring law. It just, to me, it just, um, it's a confusing way to go about it. Well, for most things, the definition is not changing. It's just that the, the this uh, mooring one was sort of an outlier. It was, it was different from the others. No, okay, right. we're gonna we're gonna recess this here. We'll recess this here. We're we're here. We close it. Yeah, we close the ramp. We close the ramp. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we're just waiting sure? for the resident. I think. I don't think we closed it. Oh, okay. I think we well, recessed. You, you it. might be right. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna recess this hearing. Anybody else want to speak to this before we? Uh... Okay. <clears throat> we'll recess this hearing and we'll open the hearing on the Myers Wetland application. Dot. 
the application of Audrey and Campbell Myers, 2 Bay Avenue, for a wetlands permit for renovation and expansion of existing single family home, construction of a proposed swimming pool, pool patio, accessory structure, including garage, pool cabana, and attached a storage shed, outdoor kitchen, and fireplace. Money board? Yep. I have the planning board uh, report, and I'll just read the uh, the items that they noted instead of all of the pages. Um, they visited the site and had the following observations. Um, there will be new construction encroaching into the 75 foot vegetative buffer. Per the calculation schedule on the survey prepared by Michael Hammer, um, last dated July 28, 2021, the two additions shed and steps extend 176 square feet into the buffer. Per code section 129-2, new construction of less than 100 square feet um, is permitted. It may be possible to reduce the shed size to bring the total intrusion increase into conformance with the 129-2 exemption. Um, another point they had was the existing concrete pass on the water side of the property leading to the gazebo and dock will be removed and will be replaced by a paver walkway. This is an improvement as it allows for improved permeability. The town board may wish to take this into account when considering the previously mentioned total intrusion increase. Um, the next was the the short environmental assessment form notes the project site is located in the 100 year floodplain. No FEMA zones are indicated on the survey and its existence should be confirmed. The, um, next point, the existing sanitary system and well both with, within the vegetative buffer are being relocated out of the regulated area. A new nitrogen reducing IA system and well are being installed. The san sanitary system relocation and upgrade is a major improvement. The next point is the project proposes a saltwater chlorinated swimming pool within the adjacent regulated area. The pool equipment is to be located in the accessory structure cellar. The town board has required automatic pool covers and cartridge filter for pools within the regulated area in the past and may wish to consider them for this application. The next point is the survey shows two dry wells in the area of the old driveway that presumably will collect and recharge the house's roof stormwater. There is another dry well shown in the front yard near the driveway. It is not clear if it is to be the dedicated pool dry well or be the required stormwater dry well for the garage. The applicant should detail its use and or add a dry well if needed. And the last point is a landscape plan designed by Arias Design dated May 10th, 2021 has been submitted showing a 25 foot planting buffer and detailing shrubs and perennials to be planted. In addition to the raised bulkhead top, this will greatly reduce stormwater flowing across the property from entering the creek. We recommend that no fertilizers or pesticides be permitted on this property. And their conclusion was if the expansion into the vegetative buffer can be limited to 100 square feet, possibly by decreasing the attached shed size so that it does not extend into the 75 foot buffer. And with the consideration of our other comments, the planning board would support approval of this application. Okay, Howard, uh, CAC? Did you want to speak to it, Jim? Did you want to speak? Yeah, to okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I had the nine recommendations. See, just out of curiosity, at the last meeting that I was sick earlier this week <laughs> in the bathroom there, uh, did you discuss this again or no? No, we didn't have oh, a meeting. Okay. We didn't get into the hall. Don't press that meeting. Oh, that, that oh. Quite a bit because yeah. I sent you an email that somebody from our committee should have a COVID presentation happening again. Yeah. Okay. Should have called me. I would have. Yeah, I, would I mean, have to be very honest with you, uh, there's no condition at that particular point. I mean, I, I could barely no, no. stand up. So uh, I understand that. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I think going forward, we yeah. have to be able to get into the hall to have our meetings, and so either myself or the co-chairman yeah. walk get a combination to town hall. Yeah. Plus, well, we want to be zooming. I, I will tell you that a lot of other committees have uh, people like Christina that are here that are taking notes on the meeting, and they open up usually 20 minutes before. Right. So that's always a nice safety net. We don't have that in the CAC, and it might be something we might want to think about. We should have that. I think, well, because that, our our site is outdated. Three of us are not even listed as, as being members anymore. It was in September. Yeah. They so that don't. that's that's all the more reason why. Plus, there's not, not last couple of um, minutes were not put on the site. Yeah, you have a clerk, right? No, no, no we don't. That's okay, that, okay. You have a, we give the right, 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 right. Okay, should have. <clears throat> we'll take care of that. Yes. Yeah. So that okay. that's something that's just you know. Okay. I'm normally up here early to set up, but okay, that's 
didn't happen. We're on it. Okay, the Myers application we met on September 13th. There were nine recommendations from the CAC. They go as follows. Relocate the LPG tank out of the 100 foot buffer. Number two, 176 square feet building and 75 foot buffer reduced to 100 square feet. So they wanted to see that taken down mm -hmm. by 76 feet, square feet. Provide automatic pool cover. Reduce pool depth to four feet because of the high water. Um, five, submit details of protective fencing. Number six, submit the site plan prepared by Michael Hosmer to the New York State DEC by the current owner or previous owner. Number seven, allow entrance into West Basement to verify West Basement wall is on plan. Number eight, what does that mean? I, I, that I, I, he'll have to explain that to you because that, that doesn't make any <clears throat> sense to me, but I, you know, I think Howard will, will ring a bell. Yes. Uh, el el limit, I'll, I'll come back to that. Eliminate basement for the uh, cabana and garage to minimize removal of the 25 foot adjacent vegetated buffer. And number nine was no dewatering for anything you know, on the property. So if you could explain to the supervisor, allow entrance into the west basement to verify west basement wall is on the plan. What that is, is I was on camera on that one looking on, <coughs> it's a crawl space under the existing porch. Okay. It's not a wall going down for foundation. Okay. And that's not listed uh, that it would be excavated and it's shown on the architectural plans. They should be corrected to show that that's a new wall, okay. which would be work within the 75 foot which was very much against any work in the 75 foot. And I should also state that the uh, uh, zoning code says a minimum, and no construction should be for a minimum of 75 foot and no building or structure should be erected in the 100 foot. So we have that 100 foot in several places in the code and we have to take that into consideration. We can't just forget about the zoning code Mm -hmm. I mean, we, as advisory committee, we sort of assume that the zoning, the board, zoning board didn't take any exception to that, but we do. So that's what that's about. Okay. And, and before you go to that, just as a reminder, maybe we want to get that on for Tuesday executive meeting. We're sh person short on the CAC, right? Yes, we so, are. Yeah, so, so Dan, Dan, Dan was, you know, thinking about that. Other person dropped out of that, um, and I haven't heard back from um, another candidate, okay. but I think we should try to fill that spot if we possibly can in the next week or two, you know, before our next meeting, if we get that. Yeah, our next meeting is December 13th, which is also after the hearings that were just right. mentioned for Correct. 3. so we'll have a meeting afterwards, which is plenty of time to bring it up. Okay. 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 Thank you. Any comments from the audience on the... Uh... Myers application. You want to come up, please? My name is John Otis. I live at One Bay Avenue, which is across the street from this property. Um, this has been a contested <laughs> two years now in a variety of ways. I think much of it seems to have been rectified. They've changed a lot from where they started on this. Um, obviously, this is going to obstruct our view and other things you probably have heard me before uh, talk about this. Um, there's just, and obviously we can't control everything. I understand that. Um, there's a couple of things that I just wanted to mention. I'm curious about uh, the, the water testing that was done according to this, uh, their proposal was 2017. Has, it, has that water level been tested since then? Because things change in several years, um, you know, they say 8.5, but that's based on 2017. So I'm wondering if they've done a test in 2021 to verify that it's 8.5 feet the groundwater. Mm -hmm. So that's it. That's that was one thing I wanted to bring up. Um, and I also just curious about what was discussed here tonight. Is this tonight is voting on whether they're moving no, no. forward or is just no? This is just the, the hearing. Now we'll discuss it at a work session. <coughs> At then the there'll next, be another hearing at the next then we'll act on it at the next hearing. understood yeah. three weeks from today okay okay mm -hmm. just one that's december 3rd is that the yes yes, yes. okay yes, sir. all right um 
my wife, Diane. Sure. Yeah, I just I also just wanted to say anything. If you could come up closer to the mic and state your name too. <coughs> Diane Barnes, uh, One Bay Avenue, Otis. Um, uh, John has uh, been very active in the Mishamak, uh, Manantic Peninsula plan, but the, the building is definitely going smaller. There's no elevation and there's no uh, extended kind of uh, issues. The, the swimming pool at four feet is, I don't know that that will happen either. That doesn't seem to make sense from what they've always wanted to have, but these are their ideas, not ours. The shed structure to the left of the garage is an encroachment on the space. It, it could easily go in their large garage that's on the um, Simpson side, but I guess we, we just don't understand why they keep sticking with that accessory building on the garage. It seems to be uh, obtrusive and odd and um, for boats that we've never seen. So I, I guess we don't understand that and why the vegetative encroachment uh, is, uh, would be allowed. That shouldn't uh, infringe on anybody's property, especially the vegetables. Thank you. Okay. Well, and we'll, again, we'll discuss it. It won't be this Tuesday, it'll be the following Tuesday. Okay, okay. but I do appreciate the uh, serious attention that's been given to the details of this <coughs> entire application. It just seems to be key to keep pushing the envelope, pushing the envelope. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the whole street is a series of small residences that are in the scale and charm of the Manantic Colony. Right. Mm -hmm. Most you, importantly. If you and your husband would take your concerns, maybe put them down and email them to town hall here together. Okay. So just number them down. Sure. That would be very helpful so that we have those copied. We sometimes make site visits, go over and, and kind of check it out a little bit, you know, so. Right. It, it, getting that visual also helps, you know. We'd be happy to do that. Okay. And the one thing the Menantic Peninsula Association has been addressing most importantly is the water table mm -hmm. and the, the serious condition of the water uh, in our area. So okay. that, that's, that's a huge concern. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Jim. James Preston, 8 Bay Avenue. And first, thank you for not keeping us till midnight, the, day, the time that we had the first hearing on this matter. Um, the first set of plans that we were, we were able to review had a number of the details, like the number of dishwashers, implying that there were several mm, food prep type areas around. This seems to be missing in this. Is it because they cut the size of the building back? Not sure. Then the, the other thought I had was, and I'm not sure of the science, that they're going to have a saltwater pool and dump the backwashing into wells that are going to go into our water table water table. I don't know no, what- It's not a soil water pool. I think it's the filtration. So they're not using chlorine. <clears throat> okay. I, I don't know the science on that. It right. just sound, it sounds off. Yeah. And that's all. Thank you. They seem to have cut back um, from the original plans and which I, I kind of agree. You know, the um, our community was originally um, put together with a bunch of cottages that staggered the views. So that as you walked around your own community, you can kind of look around and look at the water and things like that. Well, we've seemed to have cut back way back from that. So if any of that um, addition to the south that deals with the pool and the pool house in front of um, John and Diane's house could be more transparent, that would make everybody happy too. It seems that the one around that was over on the day property is kind of is low fences, not too high hedges. You can see through it, kind of. Not that right. you're looking into it. But yeah, it, it feels more open. Yeah. It gets to be like those houses over in Southampton with thirty foot hedges. That's so good. Right. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. caring. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Anybody else in the audience? Uh, anybody online that is involved in this? Uh, Bailey? Bailey Larkin with Bennett and Reed offices at two twelve Windmill Lane in Southampton. Um, we are attorneys for the applicants, uh, Audrey and Campbell Myers. Um, I believe a couple of the comments that were just raised by the last speaker were addressed with the significant redesign of this project that had taken place before it was even filed with the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, what we had tried to do with the redesign of the project was to increase square footage for the property owner who was looking to expand the residence, um, by, but keeping within essentially the same footprint of the existing house. So they are proposing to finish the basement of this residence, um, which was part of the application that the Zoning Board of Appeals heard as well. 
Uh, the comments raised about using the garage on the Simpson side of the road, um, that garage is actually gonna be finished basement space. That's where they're going to pick up additional square footage within this home. Uh, the only expansion of the footprint are those two small areas on West Neck Creek. Um, Mike Shiano is actually here from Inner Science as well. And I don't know if we're allowed to, but can we share the screen to show the site plan? And yeah, sure. Okay. okay. Uh, I just need to be uh, yep, allowed to. You can share it, go ahead. Okay. I don't like to share the screen personally. I make Mike do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> so if you take a look at the site plan, uh, we tried to keep you know, the renovation to the minimal expansion on the water side of the house. It just fills in those two squares um, kind of in the footprint of the existing home. No addition will be closer to West Neck Creek than the existing home itself. Uh, we tried to keep everything at least as far away from that, uh, the water as possible. Uh, the pool and the uh, has a dedicated dry well. We had submitted with our uh, plan, uh, also an additional plan from Maresca uh, that had been submitted with the Suffolk County Department of, Department of Health Services. We actually had to go to the Board of Review for review of this application. Um, they have granted approval as has the final wastewater system been signed off on by the health department. Uh, the proposed wastewater system is going to be an IA system. The existing wastewater system is significantly closer, um, kind of off of Simpson Avenue to uh, where the proposed system will go. We located as far as possible from the water also, um, which is a significant environmental benefit over what's existing on the property. With respect to the boat shed, um, again, there's not going to be a garage in the basement of the existing house. And so we had proposed uh, constructing a boat shed adjacent to the garage um, and the pool house structure. That boat house, is, the length of it is actually dictated by the boat that is proposed to be located in there. And the property owner um, actually gave us the specifications for it. And the boat itself is 29 and a half feet in length. So the, the boat shed has been proposed at 32 feet in length just to accommodate that boat so it's not sitting out in the yard. Um, there was a comment also I heard, and I don't know if we can get a copy of the comments that had been submitted this evening in writing, which would be helpful for us to address, um, about the basement hatch entrance in the front yard. Uh, that basement hatch entrance is to uh, actually go within the basement of the proposed pool house so that we can keep our equipment inside of the, the structure itself rather than take up additional ground space. Um, we can definitely speak with our client about the depth of the pool and also the automatic pool cover. Um, as was mentioned, we are removing an existing concrete path as well, which is a significant, significant coverage within that. 75 foot regulated area and um, we are proposing a 25 foot native vegetative buffer which uh, we would agree to uh, ensure that that area is not fertilized as well um, as was requested so um, but again I think that overall and I, I, Mike is obviously available if you have any questions uh, about the uh, environmental impact of the site but we did try to scale back the project from what was originally seen by the neighbors in, in a prior application. Um, again, we're, we're trying to keep within essentially the footprint of the existing house while still accommodating additional space for them. Uh, the garage obviously has to be relocated because the basement area is going to be finished space. Um, and uh, that's, that's about all I have for this evening. So just, just for my clarification, the proposed one-story building. Oh, you have to speak into the mic. Oh, sorry. Uh, the proposed one-story building is a garage, or it's a it's a live-in live-in facility. No, it, it's a garage and a pool house combined in one single structure. And that goes beyond the accessory, the primary setback, and to and goes into the accessory setback. Correct, because it's an accessory structure. I guess that would be where it, you know, is it is all of that necessary? 
uh, there is a specific in the zoning code a specific setback required for uh, buildings that have uh, what, what what the code defines as sleeping rooms. But the zoning the uh, the the building department requires that any uh, building that has any type of bathroom, which the only bathroom that's that will be in this is like a powder room, essentially a a, a toilet and a sink. Um, so there is a specific setback for such buildings, and we meet that setback. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, that's the part that is. Yeah, I think I think the, the I think the discussion again will be a week from Tuesday, and uh, well, I'd prefer if you can be here. Sure, as we'll be to happy being to. on Zoom. I mean, if, if you know whoever can't make it, you know you're welcome to sure. join us on Zoom. But uh, because the, you know. the the property as proposed now is designed still has six bedrooms and six baths. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it is a sensitive area. Yeah, Howard. Thank you. Thank you. At our meeting that we had on this property. The gazebo, which is 64 square feet, was not included in the 100. So that leaves them really only, what, 36 square feet that they can add into the 75 to get the total of 100 square feet on the property in the 75 foot. Mm -hmm. You have to count all the things. In right. The mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Could you stop sharing the screen, please? Sure. Yeah. Anybody else? Mike, Bailey, anything else you want to? No, I, I would ask if we could get copies of the uh, planning board and the CAC. Yes. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Um, I guess I would just want to add that the um, we did mention that there is a 25 foot wide buffer that we are proposing. Uh, the area of, of that is approximately, and I'll get the exact uh, numbers. I'll have that uh, available next time, but it's approximately 4,000 square feet of vegetated area that we are adding to the property that is now just lawn that goes down to the edge of the buffer. I mean, the, uh, the bulkhead. Um, was that on so, the, I didn't, was that on that plan? Uh, that was on, on that plan. It was on, uh, we, we submitted a separate, um, uh, okay. uh, Buffer plan that has the uh, where the plants were going to go. So so there's um uh, with that 4,000 square feet, we felt that that offset uh, uh, because it was it was it's far more than the uh, number of the area of structures that we are proposing. But yeah, that's in the yeah, back, not it. the side. Is it in the back or the side? No, it's in the back. It's on the uh, it's in the back. Yeah. Can you share that? Uh, I probably can. Hold yeah, on a we can, Amber has. We'll share that. I guess I can follow it up. <clears throat> I can make it a little bigger here. So there's the uh, gazebo by the water, and that's the uh, that's the proposed buffer. But the gazebo, uh, as you said, is footprint on the yeah. property, correct? In square footage. Okay. Uh, and all of the plants that are proposed uh, were um, plants that are listed on the Conservation Advisory Com uh, Council's uh, list of recommended plants. Okay. Okay. Thank so, uh, so we'll, uh, Mike and Billy will send you these the reports from the CAC and the planning board and we'll uh, discuss it a week from next Tuesday. Okay. Thank you very much. Hey, anybody else? Yeah. 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 We'll get we'll get the um the application, all the documents on the town website so they're accessible for everyone. Not next Tuesday. Okay. No, a week from yeah, a week, week right. from Tuesday. Right. Right. I'm not sure um that. yeah it might be on the architect's plan to take a closer look. I need to blow this up because it's too small on my screen. Okay, anybody else want to just talk on this one? Okay, so we're gonna recess this.
Yes. Okay, we'll recess this hearing and we will reconvene our regular meeting and act on the white boring application. White, Don, and Vandenberger? Yeah, we can act on all four of them. Uh, not Weber. No, not Weber. <sighs> Thanks, Howard. Are there just four of them? Three. There should be three. No, there's. Because we're not doing Weber. We're not doing Weber. Okay, so I got white. Okay. So, so you take that one. Okay. Whereas Burton White, 34 South Menantic Ro Road, has petitioned the town of Shelter Island for permission to install a mooring at West Neck Creek at a location designated as latitude 41.055104 degrees north and longitude 72.354573 degrees west. And whereas a public hearing was duly held on the 12th day of November 2021 for all interested persons to be heard in favor of or in opposition. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town clerk is hereby authorized to issue a permit. For the affirmation to installation so moved second all those in favor aye aye whereas charles dunn 8020 tothill uh, drive has petitioned the town of shelter island for permission to install a mooring in cockles harbor at a location designated as latitude 41.07428 degrees north and latitude 72.29142 degrees west said mooring location was formerly occupied by the robertson c uh, 2551 mooring Whereas a public hearing was duly held on the 12th day of November, 2021, for all interested persons to be heard in favor of or opposition. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town clerk is hereby authorized to issue a permit for the aforementioned installation. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Whereas Sylvie Van Hylenbrook <clears throat> and Peter Van Der Bruggen, 8 Rocky Point Road, have petitioned the town of Shelter Island for permission to install a mooring in West Neck Bay, approximately 125 feet northwest of the W3543 Langham mooring, and designated as location latitude 41.065132 degrees north and longitude 72.363774 degrees west. And whereas a public hearing was duly held on the 12th day of November 2021 for all interested persons to be heard in favor of or in opposition. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town clerk is hereby authorized to issue a permit for the aforementioned installation. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. At this time, we'll open the meeting to the public. Uh, anybody have any questions, comments? Jim, DJ, Jim. Thank you. One or three steps on the bottom. Yeah. Okay. I believe it was last May. New York State authorized the increase of the veterans exemption on property taxes from fifty thousand, and they gave several other higher levels. And I'd just like you to learn about it, think about it. Because yesterday uh, morning over the Legion, I saw a lot of viable residents who would benefit by it. So learn about it and think about it. Thank you. Jim, uh, just specifically those exemptions included what? Right now, the, the exemption is 50,000 tax. And it goes up 100, 150. So there's the benefit to the veteran Principal residency, somewhat more. Okay, well, that's the camera. we'll find out. Okay, but we'll look into that. For the record, on that, I don't, I don't know that the scale is particularly, but I know that the uh, assessors have the scale, and any veteran that, that can go in and apply to uh, for that exemption, and the assessors will figure that out for them what their percentages should be. You should make it public. Yeah. I was say, BJ yeah. has something to say on it. BJ will have some information on that. I think what you're asking is that the town board needs to pass the new limits mm -hmm. to make them applicable. So, Bob, yeah, they have it, but there's new limits now. So, we'll have to look at that and get yeah. that passed. And likewise, let the people know about it. Right. Yeah. Name, we usually run a name. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Peter. Mm -hmm. Good point, Jim. Thanks. Anybody else have anything? Ambrose? I'm good, Jerry. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, if there's nothing else, uh, I'm gonna make a motion that we uh, adjourn the meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thanks everybody. Have a good weekend. Have a nice weekend.